So first, before we discuss geology and landscapes and so on, let's just take a moment and admire what a beautiful picture this is. As human beings, let's just say this is you know, uh, an aesthetic moment as much as it is a scientific moment. And I don't think, you know, having been a reader of science fiction and admirer of space art, I don't believe that, that uh, even the best space artists in the world, like Chesley Bonestell or Don Davis, could make a painting as beautiful as this a priori. This is nature outdoing us every time. Okay, having said that, uh, I know you're all interested in what uh, the imaging team thinks might be going on or what we think we're seeing. You know, we informally refer to this large uh, region as the heart, but the heart actually is uh, of two different uh, beasts. The west half of the heart, uh, which is on the left-hand side, is uh, smooth uh, in this image. Uh, we think it may actually really be smooth, although we can't be completely sure because the compression uh, that we used to return the picture to us last night can destroy uh, some types of shading, which might have given us an indication of whether it had topography or textures. But hopefully the pictures we'll get back tomorrow will show whether there is, in fact, uh, topography and texture in this region or not. Let's talk a little more about <laughs> what we're seeing on the surface. So if you uh, treat the heart as the bullseye and move kind of towards the 8 o'clock position just into the dark space, you can see there are some craters. There are a few craters out there, including a, a fresh crater. It's kind of on the intermediately bright to dark boundary, which is about uh, 50 uh, miles across. So we do see some craters. And so we think at least some regions on Pluto are, are uh, relatively ancient. They're probably several billion years old. Other places where we see no craters at all uh, are very young and perhaps are still currently undergoing geological evolution. Uh, we're also seeing evidence where craters seem to be destroyed at about the uh, uh, 2 o'clock position into the intermediately gray area about halfway towards the edge of the planet. There are craters which you see half the crater in one place, but the other half of the crater is missing, which suggests some kind of erosions operating on the surface. Uh, we are still trying to understand the nature of all the dark spots, including the whale. The uh, whale is uh, uh, the head of the whale is the dark spot you see coming around on the left, which we have now given it the informal name of Cthulhu. <laughs> That's all. Right. We also gave the dark spot on the uh, uh, lower right the informal name of Krun. The North Polar region doesn't show a lot of topography yet, but that's because the sun's shining very high up there, and uh, so you don't get a lot of shape from shading, which uh, is the way people, the way the human eye, when you don't have stereo information, is able to understand whether you're seeing topography or not. And I want to caution everybody as the pictures come down over the next few days um, that until we are, are able to generate our stereo products, we and all of you can be deceived by what I like to refer to as pathological shading, which would be where a slope facing the, uh, the polar uh, nearly permanent sun this time of uh, Pluto's seasons could be getting dark and the slope away from that uh, polar sun could be frosting up and turning bright. So you might see a dark bright pair and think, oh, that's a hill when it might be a depression. So the, the, the stereo products that we have collected in the Digital terrain maps that we will generate will be essential in determining what is up and down and what real geological processes are operating on the surface of Pluto. So please stay tuned with us over the next weeks and months and years as we interpret the surface of this amazing, spectacular, diverse world that really blows my mind. I think it blows everybody's mind.